The Leafs have a trade to announce. Just when I thought I was getting my birthday off. Thanks, guys! Listen, if you're gonna make me do a trade video on my birthday, you better make it a good one! And they didn't even do that! So there is a trade, it is one for one, and it's between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Columbus Blue Jackets. The trade is, and anyone watching from Finland, I'm sorry in advance, the Leafs acquire goaltender Viney Vavalainen, and the Columbus Blue Jackets receive defender Miko Lettinen. So what a biased fan will tend to do is they'll praise a player while they're on their team and then when they're traded out of town they'll go, ah, he wasn't that good anyway. Leafs fans, Blue Jackets fans, I am sorry to say my gut reaction to this is, wow, that sucks. Now, that's not to say I don't like Vevelinen on account of, uh, I knew about as much about him as you did when you heard about the trade. But Miko Lettinen, Leafs fans, Blue Jackets fans, let's spend some time on that. Leafs fans were so excited when the Leafs got Miko Lettinen and this was like a year ago now that they signed him. They signed him like when the pandemic was relatively early. It seemed like most teams around the NHL had at least some sort of interest in him and were in on him. And then he signs with the Leafs, a team that desperately needs defense. Oh, but he's left-handed. Ah, but he can play the right side. Oh, I love this guy. Tell me more about him. He had such a good season in the KHL that they call him the Finnish Bobby Orr. Tell me more. Well, I'm really not sure what you need to know beyond he's the Finnish Bobby Orr. And then what happened? But because there was all these expectations. He was supposed to do so well. This is super unfortunate for the Toronto Maple Leafs because I think in almost any other season where training camps begin in September and they last for, what, what, what is it, at least three weeks and he gets the full exhibition schedule, I think this guy would be a top six defender on the Leafs. Now, part of the reason he's not a member of the top six of the Leafs defense right now is the Leafs defense has been quite good, way better than last year. Travis Dermott, young player in this league, getting better with age, also over a year removed from his shoulder surgery now. Zach Bogosian has been a pretty wonderful signing. Outside of a tough first two games, he's proven to be a useful part of the Leafs defense. Dermott said he makes him a better player. He's a faster skater than I thought, a better puck mover than I thought. Justin Hall on the second pair on the right side with Jake Muzzin, the shutdown pair, has been a revelation this season. He's playing the best hockey of his career. The top power play is quarterbacked by Morgan Riley. The second power play is quarterbacked by TJ Brody. And now you're bringing in this offensive specialist who's really good on the power play. Hmm. With a full camp and exhibition schedule to prove that, hey, I can compete with and be better than Travis Dermott or Zach Bogosian, I think Miko Lettinen might still be on this team. And let me be clear in saying, I think the Leafs just gave the Columbus Blue Jackets an NHL quality defender. This is not a typical season at all. He's got to start the season in the KHL and he plays there for a bit and it's a completely different game. And then he's got to come to Canada to play with the Leafs, but he's got a quarantine. And then there's really no exhibition schedule at all. So how are you supposed to judge whether or not Miko Lettinen is NHL ready without seeing him play in NHL games? He didn't look bad. He didn't look like the Finnish Bobby Orr, and he really didn't have much time to prove himself. TJ Brody would come off the second power play as Miko Lettinen would quarterback it during those games, and he did well. The 27-year-old only got into nine games with the Leafs, but he did put up three points, and I think one of them was a two-point game. Offensively, this guy's an NHL player. With the Columbus Blue Jackets, especially if you use him on the power play, this guy is an NHL player offensively. Through nine games and with the ice time he was getting, which was not very much, I don't know how you're supposed to properly evaluate a player, but in the action that I saw in the Leafs end featuring Miko Lettinen, ah, I wasn't the biggest fan. Not disastrous, but certainly not better than the two guys he was trying to beat for a roster spot. Now, should you expect that a player will be clearly better than NHL players having never played in the NHL in whatever this season is? Uh, no. Are you supposed to even get used to North American ice when all you do is practice? The Leafs sent him to the Marlies to get some ice time, I thought, I think we all thought, and I thought he was gonna crush in the American Hockey League. That guy's gonna throw up so many points. But obviously a conversation was had because I don't think the Leafs wanted to trade Miko Lettinen. They're just trying to do right by him. And he's going to get an NHL opportunity in Columbus. Any Blue Jackets fans watching right now, I don't understand why you would make this trade and why Miko Lettinen would want this trade if he's not going to be in your top six right away. The Leafs lose Lettinen and that's obviously a negative, but here are some positives that I'm going to read for it. It seems obvious that it's time. 
for Rasmus Sandin and or Timothy Liljegren. Obviously the Leafs top two defensive prospects we've already seen a big old bunch of Sandin in the NHL and he's clearly an NHL player who they're just happening to play in the A because they can and Liljegren we saw a cup of coffee in the NHL while the team was generally terrible around him so I'm not going to judge him too harshly but he is rocking it in the American League. Those two being the next up and a guy like Callie Rosen who's still in the wings and Tamo KV Halme and yes I'm going to say Martin Marincin. Basically when there are injuries it looks like the Leafs are going to leave it in the hands of their youth. It's got to be their time eventually. Getting back to Letton I've seen some fans go well that's it the Leafs aren't going to be able to sign any KHL or European free agents anymore because of this song. Really? Because Nikita Zaitsev was a free agent signing for the Leafs and they gave him over 30 million dollars. And they made Igor Ojiganov a regular top six defender in the NHL even though he super didn't deserve to be. Ilya Mikheyev is literally on this team. I doubt this affects the Leafs that much because all situations are unique and in general with their European free agents uh, the Leafs have done pretty right by them. So Leafs fans now Vaini Vehalainen. Speaking of guys who can't get into games, he's had one AHL game this season. He allowed three goals on 24 shots and a lost. And in the NHL, he's played a grand total of 11 minutes this season. Uh, it was actually just last week and he stopped three out of four shots. Okay, can you give me an even bigger picture? Well, actually, he played 13 games in the Finnish League as well, and he had an 890 save percentage there. Yeah, how about last year? He had a 901 in 33 AHL games. You just keep selling me on this! But the season before, he was a 930 in Finland, and now I have your attention. From the Leafs press release, the Finland native has represented his country on multiple occasions in international play. He captured a gold medal at the 2019 IIHF World Championship, and previously won gold at the 2016 World Junior Hockey Championships. And he was the sixth round pick of the Columbus Blue Jackets in 2018. He is currently 24 years old. So his best accomplishments are definitely there, but they're fading further into the past. And his numbers in North America, uh, not great. Some people have been big on him for a while though. From Ian Tullock, whoa, I've wanted the Leafs to draft this guy dating back to 2016. Goalies are voodoo and he's already 24 years old, but Ve Vevelinen, oh my god, I'm gonna screw this guy's name up so much, I'm so sorry, has a strong track record in the Finnish Pro League. Vavolainen, goodness gracious Steve. Where's the H sound coming from? My imagination, I'm sorry. Anyway, it's just another name to add to the goaltending depth chart. It does make me concerned what's wrong with Jack Campbell and potentially Freddie Anderson too. The Leafs do have Joseph Wool, who was just sent down to the Marlies. They're hoping to get him some games, but they also have Michael Hutchinson. Hmm. I am definitely galaxy braining this, but I just have this weird feeling that he could be flipped. I don't know to who or for what, perhaps in a package deal. I just get a vibe. More likely, way, way, way more likely. This trade is essentially Callie Rosen for Michael Hutchinson from last year. Hey, we need a goalie. Hey, we need a defenseman. I just happen to have a defenseman I don't use. I happen to have a goalie I don't use. And that's it. A little bit more in depth from Scott Wheeler. Despite his six foot one frame, Vevelinen showed real promise as a prospect for a long time. The last year and a half has been a little tougher for him from a statistical standpoint, but there's still a lot to like about his ability as a goalie to maybe become a good backup. There's control to his game, the kind of control that Tarasov lacks. He does a good job staying on his lines and holding an edge so that he can swallow the first save and avoid scrambles. I wouldn't say though, despite his small size, that he's as acrobatic and quick as you might hope. He relies on strong technical skills more than post to post quickness. Obviously a pure guess, but based on that description, I would say that means he's teachable for sure. But with the speed thing, eh, if he's going from the AHL to the NHL and the Leafs really need him, well, it's not like the shots get slower. The reason I said that I think the Leafs might be flipping this guy, I see, I understand why the Leafs would not hang on to Lettinen, and I can see why Columbus would have interest. I'm not getting why a goalie was the guy. I'm not getting that. You know, and in terms of getting guys games, the Leafs ECHL affiliate in Newfoundland isn't even playing hockey games this season. I've seen some people be like, well, this means they're not re-signing Freddie Anderson. I don't think they're related. Loosely, obviously, because they're goalies, but uh, come on. So, what do you think of the trade? Who won, who lost? Leave a comment in the comment box down below. You like Vevelinen? 
Or are you sad that the Leafs are losing the finished Bobby Orr? I was looking forward to him flying through the air after scoring the Stanley Cup winning goal, can you imagine? So my friends, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends if you're gonna make a trade on my birthday. You gotta make it a big one. How dare you? Also, I uploaded an LFR earlier today. You should check it out.